Welcome to Destination 101, the podcast of Toastmasters District 101. In this alternate short format, instead of a road trip along our namesake of Highway 101 in California, think of this as a short pit stop or a vista point. I'm your host, Birgit Starmans. Welcome to Destination 101. We have another pit stop edition. And this time, I'm going to start with a question. Would you like to say a few words? Now, that question will generally have one of two effects, great excitement or sheer terror. Well, if you've been practicing your impromptu speaking with Toastmasters with table topics, then you should be all set to go. But when does that typically happen? We're headed towards the end of the year. And this year, hopefully, we'll be able to attend gatherings and parties where we can see each other in person. And that means we can toast each other in person as well. If you think about the types of toasts that you might be asked to present, some of them are going to be more formal and some of them will be more informal. For example, if you are going to be proposing a toast at an event at work, maybe to honor someone's promotion or an award that he or she received, or you might be the best man or the maid of honor at a wedding and you're going to be expected to toast to the bride and groom. You might also be proposing a toast at a family reunion where you might be honoring the patriarchs of the family or all the members of the family that traveled the furthest to attend. In each of these situations, you'll know ahead of time that you will be proposing a toast. That gives you more time to prepare. You might need to do some research about the accomplishments of someone that you are honoring at work, or maybe do some research about the family history. Just make sure that any kind of stories that you tell are honoring the person that you're toasting, not embarrassing him or her. That also brings me to the audience, especially in a more formal situation. You may not know everybody in attendance. Again, keep your focus on the honoree. Of course, there are more informal toasts. You might be out at dinner with friends or with a romantic partner. You might choose to propose a toast to celebrate the relationship, or you might have found out that a friend just received some very good news, or you may want to thank someone for supporting you. Of course, in these more informal toasts, Everyone stays seated. You're probably going to be around the dinner table. You still want to speak from the heart, but you definitely want to keep it very short and just make sure that you get your sentiment across. Now, speaking of these more informal toasts, something that I realized growing up that it's a very cultural thing in Germany that we all toast each other. We sit down at the table, we get our drinks, whether it's wine or beer or water, whatever it is. And the first thing that we do is we toast. There is also a legend that as you're toasting another person at the table, you need to look each other in the eye. So there's not this everybody just throws their hand up with their drinks. You actually clink glasses with every person at the table and you look them in the eye when you do so. And that really establishes a personal connection. Initially, I thought it was just something that my family did, but it turns out that it's a very cultural thing. And it's a lot of fun. And when my friends go out with me, they know that I'll be the first one to propose a toast, even if it's just, hey, I'm glad we're all together. As you prepare for holiday parties and get togethers, here are a few tips to keep in mind when it comes to toasting. First of all, speak from the heart. The whole point is that you are honoring other people, whether for an accomplishment, the relationship, just for being there. Make sure that you're speaking from the heart. Don't be very artificial about it. Keep it very personal. Also keep it short and sweet. This is not the time for a longer speech. It's not a time to list every single accolade a person has received or every single situation in which you're grateful for someone else, but keep it to the point. Keep it to the situation at hand. In terms of a structure, address the honoree, explain what the toast is about, maybe insert a story, and then encourage everyone to raise their glass and toast to the honoree. And again, keep it short and sweet. Try not to use notes. It comes across as being a bit fake. Now, if you need to remember certain dates or certain points in someone's resume, if you don't know them very well, if it's a work situation, go ahead and jot those down. But overall, it comes across as being a lot more genuine and heartfelt if you don't read notes. Also, realize that it might not be perfect. It might not be your perfect speech, but it's not about you. It's about the person that you're toasting. So it's just important to get the sentiment across. And with that, with the holidays coming up, no matter what you're celebrating, from Christmas to Hanukkah to Kwanzaa to Diwali, I wish you very happy holidays and a very happy new year. (laughs) 
tune in next time and comment or email us at destination101.podcast at gmail.com and review prior episodes at www.d101tm.org slash destination-101. Chat with you soon. Oh, my God.